This video is for people who've done some test-driven development before, or at least are familiar with the red-green refactor loop, but are struggling with moving from pure unit tests to TDD in UI components, UI components in React or Vue. How do you write your test cases and your assert in such an environment? How do you TDD in such an environment? First, I'll walk through an example from a user story all the way to the different test cases in code. Then I'll explain my thinking behind what the test cases in those different levels actually look like. Let's get into it. Part one, the example. Imagine we're building a webshop app in React and we as a developer are tasked to build a subscribe to newsletter form. What tests do you start with? If you're unfamiliar with TDD or you've only ever done TDD for pure functions or on the back end, then this may be a very difficult question to answer. Let's look at what tests you could write in what order. I've shown the acceptance test-driven development, the ATDD loop, the outer loop and the inner loop before, but let's quickly look at it for those who haven't seen it. There's basically an outer loop and an inner loop. The red-green refactor order still applies. There's just, you start with an acceptance test. So a test that is on a very high level that doesn't, uh, that isn't concerned with lots of details. That's the one you write first. If that's red, you can move on to a lower level, like a small component level or like a unit test level. You would write another test that fails. And the moment that fails, you can start to move to the green phase. You can start to implement the code so that that first unit test will pass. Then you refactor, then you write another red test. You can iterate through this inner loop a few times until you have the outer tests, the first test you've written, which is an ATDD, maybe an integration test, maybe an end-to-end -end test. That is the thing that then becomes green. And then you can write another test on that high level for the outer loop that fails. That is the basis of the outer loop, inner loop, ATDD loop. Let's look at the user story. As a returning customer, I want the option to subscribe to a newsletter so that I receive regular updates about new books and offers. There's four acceptance criteria, clear visible subscription form on the homepage. It requires only an email address. Users receive an email after subscribing and there's a privacy policy link. What ATDD test case would you come up with? My initial attempt would be to take the acceptance criteria and turn them into test cases as literal as possible. The acceptance criteria itself can be the title of the test and you can think of the asserts that would make sense. Sometimes this is easy, sometimes you could literally copy paste those, sometimes this is difficult and sometimes this might be near impossible, depending on the acceptance criteria itself. Look at the email example. You can not write an integration test very easily that would be able to test whether an email was sent and received by a party. That would be at least end-to-end -end level and it would be a very complex thing to write. My first test case would be subscribe to newsletter should be on the homepage. I've chosen this title which is slightly different from the acceptance criteria. I've just said it's nice to copy paste the acceptance criteria quite literally, right? Yeah, that's true. But clearly visible is a design requirement. That is something that's going to be very difficult to test for in an automated way. So I think it is useful to test whether a component is visible on the homepage. That is something that makes sense on that level. If you have page tests, those are different from component tests or unit tests. If you have tests on the level of the page, the homepage in this case, then it makes sense to add a test there. What is the homepage responsible for? It is responsible for combining all the components that are on that homepage. It is not responsible for all the old little details like validating an email address. That is something on the unit level or the component level for later. Right now we're looking at the high level. We're starting ATDD. I've chosen this title because I can write a test for this. It is feasible to write a test for that looks for a component that is a newsletter that maybe has a title and that there's a form or a submit, something like that. I can actually write a test for that. Making this test pass requires you to create a component and include it on the homepage and check if it's there. That's really it. This is what it could look like. If I have tests on the level of pages, then I have homepage tests. I could include my subscribe to newsletter component and I want it to be visible. This uses the testing library with the React plugin. After writing this test, I can create these components, I can include it in the homepage, and I can make this test pass. Subscribe doesn't have to work, it doesn't have to be a form at this point. Remember TDD is about creating small loops, this is a very small iteration to get started with. Now this seems like a very simple test, it may even seem useless to you, but it's not. It makes a lot of sense. The first acceptance criteria clearly states what the responsibility of the homepage is, 
In the context of the newsletter, it has only one simple responsibility. Show the component. And that's really all we're testing here. The future tests that are all about the details about how we subscribe to a newsletter, whether your email address is right, whether you click the submit button, those will be tests that we will not write on this level. They will be in a different describe call in this syntax and they will be in a different file. They might be component tests or unit tests. On the homepage level, this is the only test that makes sense. Then I can start working on the second acceptance criteria. And my second test case could be, it does not submit form when incorrect. And note that this test case is not testing whether email validation works. It is testing, it is focused on whether the form is disallowing the submit, whether it is actually showing the error. Yes, it does simulate typing an incorrect email address, but if you look at the assert, that is not what it's actually testing. So where do we test whether email validation works? On unit level, because that's very easy to implement as a pure function and everything we can move to the unit level is a win because those tests are easier and run quicker and are cheaper. And now we do need to take the next step. We are in the outer TDD loop. We've written a test case. The test is red. We've run it to validate whether it's red. And now we want to implement to make this test green. But if you look at this implementation, you cannot implement this test without also doing some form of email validation. So are we going to implement email validation now? No, we're going to write another test on the unit level that will then allow us to implement email validation. But then I came to a different conclusion. I'm not ready to write a unit test yet. When I thought about writing the HTML, the component structure for this subscribe to newsletter component, it turns out it has inputs and buttons and whatnot in there. Those are also components that are reusable. So I have a bigger component that is using a smaller component. A button is just a small component, but it's still a component test that I would write for that. The input itself, it gave me this component test. The email input is invalid when touched, required and empty. That is something that I want it to do. If it is a required field, somebody has clicked on it to activate it, um, has entered something or removed it or has not, doth, not done anything with it and then moved out of the field, I want the field to show it's an error. This is still not a unit test. It is still a component test, albeit a small one. It is the simplest test case I could think of for the email input being invalid. And after working on this level, I can move to the next one. Maybe I've made this test pass by solving it with if empty string then show error. I didn't even really need a unit test for that. But now that I do need to do actual email validation because I'm progressing further and further in developing this user story, at some point I do need a unit test. These three unit tests specifically. Uh, of course I want to write them one by one and then do the implementation, but to give you an example of what these unit tests could look like. I'm thinking about the titles and the asserts and then I start implementing the rest of it. Of course there is all kinds of code that I need to write here to make this test actually more than just pseudocode as with everything I've shown before. But it's important to think about the titles and the asserts first. That is what the core of your test is. It allows for these A to Z characters in this format. It disallows leading zeros. It maybe disallows some of these temporary email domain services. Part two, system under test. System under test is simply a term for what you are testing. The code that your test is testing is your system under test. If you have different functions and they all have their own tests, those tests have different system under tests because they are testing different code. If you have multiple tests that are testing the same code, the same function maybe, then yes, they, these tests share the system under test. As long as they're not doing anything different, maybe one is mocking and the other is not, then they have a different system under test. The act of mocking a subcomponent or a dependency in a test is shrinking the system under test because now you are not testing that anymore. You are just testing the component and a mock. But before I talk further about the system under test, I need to introduce some definitions so that it is easier to keep the different levels of tests apart from each other. Specifically, I want to talk about atomic design. Atomic design is basically a naming convention. You have these components on different levels that it defines. It defines atoms, molecules, organisms, and then templates and pages. I won't be focusing too much on the difference between templates and pages here. Uh, I'm assuming they're the same thing. Atoms are the smallest possible components. Molecules are a bit bigger and they are composed of atoms. If a molecule is not consisting of atoms, then it is not a molecule, then it is an atom. If, it's the, if it does not contain any child components, it is an atom itself. 
atoms could be the components that I've already mentioned before, like an input or a button. Molecules could be the search box, which includes the title and the input and the button that we saw before. And an organism is something that is way bigger, like a header of an entire website, which includes again molecules like the search box with its title and button. The most minimal way to use atomic design is to have a components folder in your code base, where your React components are, for example, which has three subfolders, atoms, molecules, organisms. And all your components are not directly in the components folder, but are within one of those three folders. But let's look at the pure functions, the unit test level first, before we move into those component tests. Unit tests are not React components. They are pure functions. You don't need to render a React component to run a unit test, if it's up to my definition. A unit test could be this reducer, which is a pure function. It receives all of its dependencies as arguments, it returns something, and it has no side effects. And a test for this is simply something you do with Jest or Vtest. You don't need to have Cypress component tests, you don't need to have testing library or any of those things. Another example could be this function that is a util. It is a way to walk an object and all of its leaf nodes. And the unit test for that could be this file. And the last unit test example is a React hook. Yes, you can on unit level test a React hook. You don't need a rendered React component to unit test that. Yes, you do need some kind of util like the React hooks testing library, but it doesn't fully render a React component and your unit tests can really be at the unit level. These examples are different from the other tests that I've shown before. You don't need to render a React component, you don't need Cypress or testing library, any of those things, which make it slower, more brittle, and harder to write, to be honest. And now that we talked about unit tests, let's talk about component tests next. For me, a component test is anything that renders a UI component, so a React component or a view component or something like that. We used to have Enzyme, now most people have moved to testing library, or even to Cypress component tests, but I think those are the tools for that. You are actually rendering React component, and that means that React framework itself is also being rendered. Therefore, it is. Let's talk about integration tests later, but it's it's at least an integration test. I would say it's definitely not a unit test anymore. But the problem I have with integration tests is that you have many different levels of those integration tests, those component tests. You have components that are as small as an atom, and you have components that are as big as a page. All of those are React components. Are all of them component tests? Are all of them integration tests? I think yes and yes. But the answer to that means it's not really that useful to have those terms, because if somebody uses, hey, I've written this component test, oh, okay, what kind of component test? I still don't know a lot. So I propose more nuance. I propose to speak about atom component test or molecule component test or page test to add specificity to what you're actually saying. An integration test for me is anything that combines the multiple software source code files or dependencies or classes together. If it, if it includes all of that in the system under test, then it starts testing it. It is an integration test because all component tests need React. They need your library. That is already, all of it is an integration test, but they're so very different. There's so much difference between a page test and an atom component test that I prefer to use those terms. Now, of course, I understand no matter how much I like atomic design, most teams and most developers are not using atomic design. So those terms, atoms, molecules, organisms, you may not be familiar with, or they may not be the right terms to speak about tests to your colleagues because they may not understand what you mean. However you want to call it, I do recommend you to introduce nuance in your language. There is such a big difference between a very small component that has tests and a page that has tests. Those tests are at a very different level. And if you have a lot of nuance in your code base, if you would use atomic design, then all your atom component tests would look very similar. It would be very clear what a good atom component test looks like because they're very comparable and it would makes sense to do the same thing for page tests. They're on a very high level and they do different things. If you don't have that nuance, then you're all, and you call everything a component test, then all of that might be very different and you don't know what good looks like. I think the term component test, if you're not more specific than that, is not very useful. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you liked it. I'd like to hear from you. Did you have this TDD in UI struggle? Did this help? 
please leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.